You can download the arts in the video for free, link in the description. For 2D water with physics that react to the player and other bodies when entering and exiting, you will first create the water scene, create a new scene with the no 2D as the core, right click, rename, rename it to water, then go to scene, scene save as, and save it. We won't add any nodes or any changes to this node 2D, as we will do all of that in the code. This is because we will make it so that we can add this node using Godot's add node window, which by doing so will remove all manually created nodes, meaning we must add those nodes in the script. Finally, select the water node 2D and add a script. Inside the script, we will first put at tool. This will make the code run inside the Godot editor, allowing us to view changes to the water from inside the Godot editor, removing the need to run the game every time we want to check the size of the water is good. Then we will establish a class name for the water. This will add this node inside of Godot's add node window and will allow us to treat this node like all the other built-in nodes inside of Godot. We will then establish 16 variables and we use export so that their values are editable from the right, allowing us to create unique bodies of water with different physics reactions using the same water scene. Water size is the size of the body with water. Surface pause y is an offset that you can provide to the water. Having a value of 0.5 will make this water better positioned for pixel art games as the visuals will have a 0.5 offset. So by giving this 0.5, we undo that offset caused by the visuals. Segment count is the amount of points in the surface of water. Each point will be rotated and repositioned to emulate the waves. So the more points, the more detailed and smoother the water physics. Player splash multiplier is a multiplier we apply to the player's y velocity, or the y velocity of whatever character body or rigid body that interacts with this water. We have this so that we don't have to change the logic inside of the player for the water to react in a certain way, as we don't want the water to overreact when the player simply steps into it, which would happen if we don't lower the velocity with this multiplier. Water physics speed is how fast the water moves to its desired positions increasing this will make the water faster meaning that the water will splash quickly and reach its resting position just as quick water restoring force is the amount of force we apply to bring the water back to its resting position wave energy loss is the amount of energy loss for the waves that are caused by the point where the player enters and exits the water this is needed to make the waves calm down over time and reach their resting position wave strength is how big the waves caused by the player entering and exiting are having this at 1.0 will make the waves that are next to the player's collision be the same as the point where the player collided wave spread updates is the amount of updates we provide per frame for the waves to the left and right this is needed to allow for smaller waves to reach their resting position faster, calming the velocity and overall size of the waves and allowing them to reach their resting position faster. Surface line thickness is how thick in pixels the line on the surface is. Surface color is the color of the line on the surface. Water filler color is the color of the main body of water. Segment data is an array that will store the data of every point or segment to know their individual velocity, height, and more. This is needed as we will use the segment count to create a bunch of points. We'll use this data to create waves. Recently splashed is needed to allow for an extra frame for physics calculation as we want to stop and start all physics calculations based on if the water is moving or not which we require an extra frame to allow the water to move. We don't override the physics calculation before it can even start. Then we have two variables which will store a reference to their respective nodes. Surface line is a line 2D which will be used for the line that is on top of the water. And fill polygon is a polygon that will provide the visuals for the body of the water. To initialize the water and spawn in all visual and collision nodes needed, we will create a custom function called initiate water. Inside, we will first set up the segment data array. First, we clear the array as this script will run in the editor, meaning that this function may run multiple times, which we don't want more values than needed. We will then loop through segment count, where i equals the segment that we are up to, which is important as each segment or point will store data needed for creating the waves. Then we will grab the segment data array and use a pen to add a value at the end of the array. And we will add a dictionary that will store four values. Height is the y position of the point. Velocity is the velocity of the y position, allowing for a smooth movement up and down. And wave to the left and wave to the right are the amount of height that the neighboring points should have when this point is moving. This is needed to create a natural fall off between points. Then we will create two nodes for the visuals. We will create a variable for each using the new function to create the node. Then we will set their various properties, such as the width, default for color or color for polygon and also for the polygon we will enable show behind parent to ensure that the body of water is behind the line that is on top then we will add the node as a child and update the variable for the reference in the node and for the polygon we instead make that a child of the surface line so that show behind parent works properly then for the collision we will do the same as we did for the visuals for the area 2d we create a variable storing the new node then for the body entered and body exited signals which are needed for knowing when the player or any other body enters the water we will connect those to two custom functions which both store a built-in variable to keep track of who is colliding we get back to these functions later, then we add the area node to the scene. For the collision shape, we create a variable to store the new node, then we create an additional variable to store the shape of the collider, then we set the size of the shape, apply the shape to the collision shape node, and set the position of the collision shape, which we half due to the collision shape node's origin being centered, and we must also add an offset for the surface position. Then we add this collision shape as a child of the area 2D node. Additionally, we don't have a variable to store the reference to these nodes as we don't need it. Now, to run this initiate water function inside the built in ready function, we can loop through all the children of this node if there are any, then call q3. Again, because the script is running inside the Godot editor. We must do this to ensure that we don't add more nodes than needed. Then we simply call the initiate water function. Now this ready function will only run once when the node is added to the scene, which is fine for when we are running the game and playing it. However, it makes it so that we can't see any of the changes to this node's export variables inside the Godot editor. To fix that, we will create an export tool button. This will create a pressable button on the right that runs the code when pressed. Export tool button will create the button. The string inside the brackets is the text on the button. The name on the variable doesn't matter as we won't refer to it, although it is still needed. Then we make it equal to a function, which we can then make call the ready function.
function. Additionally, you can add more code to this button in the same way that you add code to a normal function. Now for the physics of the water, we will create a custom function called update physics, which will have a built-in variable called delta that we will pass later when calling this function inside the built-in process function. Inside, we will first loop through every segment or point with i being equal to the index or point that we are up to. Then we will create two variables. Displacement will get the distance of the segment from the base height or resting position. This is needed as the physics will work similarly to a spring. Then acceleration will tell us how fast to move the segment based on the displacement, like a spring. Negative water restoring force multiplied by displacement pulls the segment back towards the base height. And we minus this from segment data multiplied by the wave energy loss to slow the motion of the spring over time, causing it to eventually stop once it reaches the base height. Then we add acceleration to the velocity of the segment. We multiply by delta to make sure the velocity is frame rate independent, as delta represents the amount of time since the previous frame. Then we multiply this by the water physics speed to make the water move faster or slower. And we alter the height of the segment based on its velocity. Then we do another loop. This time it's through wave spread updates. And we do two loops inside of this loop that loop through the segment count. We nest these loops inside of the wave spread update loop to force the nested loops to run their code multiple times in the frame, based on the amount of wave spread updates. For the first loop through segment count, we check if i is more than zero to grab the left neighbor from the segment, as zero doesn't have a segment to the left. Then we set the wave to left value on the current segment to the difference in height between this segment and the neighbor, multiplied by wave strain to control how strong the wave affects said neighbor. Then for the segment to the left of this one, we increase its velocity based on the wave to left value we just set, using the same logic as before. Then for the neighbor to the right, we use i less than segment count minus one, as the last segment doesn't have a segment to the right, which is why we need the minus one. Then we do the same logic as before for the left neighbor, instead grabbing wave to right rather than wave to left, and of course doing i plus one rather than i minus one. Then for the second loop, we will again do a for loop through segment count, which we must have this for loop separate from the previous one, as to allow for all the segment neighbors to have their wave to left and wave to right value set properly. Then we do the same two if statements as before, one for the left neighbor and one for the right. However, instead we are grabbing that neighbor, their height variable, and increasing it based on this current segment's wave to left or wave to right value, multiplied by delta and water physics speed. Again, make sure that the neighbor to the left is i minus one, the neighbor to the right is i plus one, the neighbor to the left uses wave to left from the current segment, and the one on the right using wave to right from the current segment. And outside all the for loops, we're still inside the same function. For the first two and the last two segments, we will forcibly make them all static, removing any and all physics. This is to avoid the leftmost and the rightmost points from moving up and down, causing them to be higher than the walls that are containing the water. And instead of just making one point static, we make two static, as only making the leftmost and the rightmost points static will still have an issue as they will create a gap when rotating to look at their neighbor points. Finally, to stop and start the physics based on if water is moving, we will check if we haven't recently splashed, as else in the case that we have, then we just set it to false, providing an extra frame for the physics to calculate, avoiding the issue of stopping physics before it can even begin. Then in the case that we haven't recently splashed, we will create a temporary variable to store whether the water is still and not moving. Then we iterate through every point on the surface line, and we check if the distance from the point, as i is equal to the point's position, from the surface position, is more than 0.001, meaning that the point is still far away from the resting position, and therefore the water is still moving. So we set is still to false, as the water is moving and not still, and use break to stop the loop, as there is no need to check the other points. Then finally, we use set process, the opposite of is still, which will stop the built-in process function if is still is true, else it'll allow the process function to run when is still is false. Additionally, we use ABS or absolute value to convert the value inside to a positive number, removing negatives from the distance calculation and allowing us to ignore the order of the two positions being compared. Then to run the update physics function, inside the built-in process function, we will call the update physics function, passing the built-in delta variable. Now for the visuals of the water to move based on the segment data variable, we will need to create a custom function called update visual Inside, we will first create two variables. Points will store all the points of the segment into a single array, only keeping track of each point's position. Then segment width is the amount of distance between each segment, which we need so that we can spread each segment equally across the top of the water. This can be done by dividing the horizontal size of the water by the amount of segments. And we do minus one to center all the points across the top of the water. Then we loop through the segment count to place all the segments with the correct height and horizontal position into the points array. We use a pen to add the value to the end of the array. And for the position of the segment, we use segment width multiplied by i, which represents the index of the segment or the segment that we are up to. Then for the y position, we supply the height of the segment from the segment data array. Then we create two more variables. This is to add an additional point to the left and right for the gap issue that we mentioned earlier inside the update physics function. These simply copy the position of the leftmost and rightmost point, but instead using surface pos y rather than any height, as these will remain static at their resting position. And for the final points, we create a new array. Then we provide the left static point, all the other points, and the right static point. And with all of these points, we can then set the surface lines points array with the final points array, which will complete the visuals for the surface line 2D. Then for the polygon that represents the body of water, we 
we create a variable called bottom y, which is the position of the bottom of the polygon. We made this variable as we will append two values, one for the bottom left and one for the bottom right, which will complete the entire polygon or shape of the body of water. Then we set the fill polygon's polygon to fill points. And finally, inside the built-in process function, we can call the update visuals function to make the visuals follow the physics of the water. Additionally, because the visuals are created inside the update visuals function, inside of our tool button, if you want to see the visuals of the water, then you can call the update visuals function. Else, you can just rely on the area 2D for knowing the size of the water. And you don't need to do this in the ready function to spawn the visuals when playing as the process function will run the function once before the update physics stops the process function as it realizes the water isn't moving, providing a single frame for the visuals to be created. Also, in the case of the area 2Ds covering the visuals and you don't want to see the area 2Ds collider, then inside of the initiate water function, you can make the area node invisible, which will hide the collision shape inside the Godot editor. Now to create the splash, we first create a custom function called splash, which will have two built-in variables, one for the position of where the splash occurred and the other for the velocity of the splash. Then we will create three variables. Local X pods will convert the X position of the splash into a local coordinate. Segment width is the same as the segment width from the update visuals function and we'll grab the spread between the segments or points. Index will grab what point is closest to where the splash occurred. This is done by dividing local x pods by the segment width. We then use clamp to ensure that the value can't be less than zero or more than the maximum amount of segments. And we do zero as that is the first segment inside of the segment data array because the array starts at zero. This is also why we do minus one as because it starts at zero, the total size will be one less than the segment count. Additionally, we convert this to an integer as we don't want any decimals as we will use this index to grab a value inside of an array which you can only do with integers and you can't do with floats. And we set the velocity of the point that is closest to the splash to the splash velocity. Then we update recently splash to be true and set process to true to enable the built-in process function to run. Now to detect the player or other bodies, we first need a way to determine what body can or cannot interact with this water. To do so, go to your player script. Inside the player's built-in ready function, we will add the player scene to a group called can interact with water. By adding the player and other nodes to this group, we can differentiate between nodes that can and can't splash in the water. And in the case that your node doesn't have a script, then on the right select node, then go to groups, press the plus, name it can interact with water, make it global, then press OK. Additionally, by making it a global group, you will now have a toggle that you can enable or disable on all nodes inside your game, meaning you won't have to write the name of the group again. And if you want to rename the group, right click it, then press rename, type the new name, and make sure to set rename references in all scenes. This will make the name change for every single scene that is added to the group. And if you want to delete it, right click it again, then press delete, and make sure to delete references from all scenes. This will remove this group from every single scene that is added to it, as otherwise if you leave this unselected, then it'll delete this group from this node, and then convert this global group into a scene group with each individual node that was added to it. Back inside the water code, inside the body entered and body exited functions that we created, we will check if the body is inside of the group we just created. Then we will call a splash function, passing the global position of the body that collided or entered the water and their velocity dot y multiplied by the player splash multiplier, which we do to ensure that the velocity isn't too high. And you can add or remove a minus in front of the player's velocity to change the initial direction of the water when entering and exiting, either making the water move up or down initially. Now an example of using this water inside your game is to go to the scene that you want to add the water to, then press the plus, type water, which this is the same as the class name that we defined earlier inside the water script, then press create. You can then move the water to wherever you want it. Then you can set the size of the water and all the other values. And to update the visuals of the water, make sure to press the update water button. Additionally, a tip that I would recommend is to make the water a bit bigger vertically, and maybe even horizontally based on your game. Then change the Z index of the water to make it behind the tiles or walls. This is to help with avoiding gaps between the water and other tiles or walls. But do keep in mind by doing this, you will need to change the Z index of the player so that the player still appears behind the water. Now you have reactive 2D water with physics. You can add to any of your 2D Godot games and don't forget to check out the project files link in the description.